of our values together, okay, to and we calculate the average of all of our values, yeah, to give us our global mean. Now, when we when we calculate the average of these particular values here, we get a global mean of x bar, x bar of g, is approximately equal to uh, 100.9286, which is approximately equal to let's say 100, 101. This is our global mean. So in our case now, the mean sum of squares value is going to be equal to uh, the first sample size, which is five, okay, times the first mean, which is 65, okay minus the global mean which is 101 and that needs to be squared and we have to do this for them all and we have to add them up it's the sum of them so plus the next sample size the next sample size for the next group is also 5 times its group mean 81 minus the global mean which is 101 to be squared plus we have the next sample size is 4 times its global its mean which is 171 minus the global mean which is 101 and that needs to be squared also and that needs to be divided by okay, k minus 1 which is 3 minus 1 okay which is going to give us a mean sum of squares value and I do this on the calculator okay it's going to give us a mean I suppose let's say we have a sum of squares value first of all up here when we calculate the numerator uh, we're going to get a value of uh, 99,000 425 and that needs to be divided by 2 so when we divide that by 2 we end up with a value of 99425 divided by 2 it uh, gives us a value of 49,712 or 700 and let's say 13 rounded to the nearest whole number okay so now we have our two main measures yeah we have our mean sum of squares within measure and we have our mean sum of squares between measure okay so we have everything that we require for our test statistic so now I suppose it's time to undertake the hypothesis test okay there was a lot in that particular calculation but we're nearly there now this is the the next bit is the straightforward uh, piece okay so once again we're doing we're doing an ANOVA calculation okay so we're doing an ANOVA calculation and ANOVA calculation okay. and now we're doing the hypothesis test the hypothesis the hypothesis test okay and so stage one is to define the hypothesis okay so step one is our hypothesis our hypothesis is a statement about the population parameters there's a null position and there's an alternative position okay uh, the null position is that there's no difference between any of the groups or there's no difference between the 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 means of the populations that the three groups were selected from so our hypothesis our null position is that mu of a is equal to mu of b is equal to mu of c that they're all equal the alternative is that at least one of those is different okay so the alternative is that at least one of those particular groups is different okay uh, let's choose a significance value in this case our significance uh, let's choose the significance level of alpha is equal to 0 0.05 which once again from an interpretation perspective this is us controlling for committing a type 1 error uh, and what we're saying is that if we do reject h0 in favor of ha we'll only be wrong 5% of the time okay or from another perspective uh, if we do reject h0 in favor of ha okay we'll be 95% confident that we've made the right decision okay but we might be wrong and we might be wrong 5% of the time okay uh, part 3 is our test statistic okay our test to statistic okay and the test statistic is f is equal to the mean sum of squares it's the mean sum of squares between measure divided by the mean sum of squares within measure and we've calculated them on the previous page the mean sum of squares between measure is 49713 okay so it's 49713 which needs to be divided by the mean sum of squares within measure which is 1099 so it's 1099 which gives us a test statistic in this case is 49713 divided by 1099 gives a test statistic of approximately 45 so f is approximately 45 that's quite a large test statistic 
Uh, now also what we have to take into consideration is the degrees of freedom associated with the test. There's two degrees of freedom that are important. Uh, there's the degrees of freedom associated with the numerator and the F statistic and there's the degrees of freedom associated with the denominator. So the degrees of freedom within uh, is defined to be n minus k which is the number of observations minus the number of groups. That's 14 minus 3. 14 observations in total, three groups, which gives us degrees of freedom within is equal to 11. The degrees of freedom between is defined to be k minus 1. Okay, uh, That's how many groups we have, minus 1, which is 3 minus 1, which gives us a value of 2. Okay, So we nearly have everything now, we're nearly there. The next thing, the next step along our journey of a hypothesis test is to calculate our critical values. So step 4 is our critical critical values. Now we're using an F statistic. The F statistic is modeled, is modeled based on an F distribution. Okay, The F distribution depending on the degrees of freedom okay, for our numerator and denominator is typ typically skewed. So our F distribution looks something like this. This is a one-tailed test. So it's one-tailed. Okay? Uh, unlike when we had two specific variances, we were free to choose which way we put them into the F statistic. In, a, in relation to the ANOVA calculation, the between measure must be the numerator and the within measure must be the denominator. So there's only one way to put them in. Okay? Uh, so this is defined to be a one-tail test. So what we're going to do is we're going to put all of our alpha, alpha is equal to 0 0.05 in the right-hand tail. So what we'll do now is we'll go to our tables. Okay. This is our degrees of freedom uh, of our between measure along here. And this is our degrees of freedom of our within measure down here. Okay, So our degrees of freedom between is 2. Our degrees of freedom within is 11. So the F distribution tables that we're interested in are the distribution tables that have 0 0.05 in the right-hand tail. Okay, so we've got a set of tables that we use here at the National College of Ireland. Uh, at the back of these, we have our F distribution. Uh, so the F distribution that has five percent of the area in the right-hand tail. Okay, uh, we're going to look for two degrees of freedom, and we're going to go down to eleven degrees of freedom and triangulate. So at two degrees of freedom and eleven, our critical value is three point nine eight. Okay, so this value here is. 3.98. Okay. So in this particular situation here, this critical value here is 3.98. Okay. So any test statistic that's greater than 3.98 okay, has at most a probability of 0 0.05 of occurring if the null hypothesis is true. Now in our situation, okay, our test statistic, so this is the critical value of 3.98, our test statistic is out here, it's far out here, it's at 45. That's our F value. Okay? So we fall into the rejection region. Okay? So our decision, step five, our decision okay, in this particular instance is, well, clearly, clearly our F statistic is bigger than our critical value. And what I mean by that is 45 is bigger than 3.98. Okay? And as such, and as such, we reject H0 in favor in favor of HA uh, at the 5% significance level, SIG level. Okay? And more importantly, we infer okay, okay, that at least at least one group okay, okay, has a mean has a mean that is different that is different different to the others okay and we're 95 percent confident about that so we're rejecting in this case so we reject h0 in favor of ha now we don't know which group it is that's different okay uh, so what we would do next is we follow this particular test up with some sort of post hoc test to try to identify which which pairings of the groups uh, actually have contributed to this particular significance Okay, guys, I do accept that there was a lot of calculations involved in this, okay? But once you get your head around the formulas that are involved, it's simply constructing a table, okay, uh, to calculate these sums of squares, okay? Uh, once you have that, you can construct your F statistic. Uh, once we have our F statistic, we can then proceed and we can actually do our hypothesis test. 
Okay guys, uh, once again this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland and I hope this video was helpful.